Hey, what's up, VC? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel. Time for another hard rock and heavy metal update. Uh, start off with, actually, let's, I think there's two of those in there. Yeah, nope. Yeah. So this is a band uh, that Scott Waters turned me on to, I don't know, five or six years ago. And uh, I never grabbed their album. Um, he's talked about them quite a bit, though. He's shown the record uh, probably five or six times over the years. And uh, I was at a record show and finally ran across a copy for like 19, 20 bucks. This isn't real expensive, but it's uh, Thrasher's Avenger of Blood. This is, I believe, their third album, uh, Death Brigade. Um, I mean, this picture basically tells you how they, or shows you how they sound. But uh, just good thrash. Uh, it's not amazing it's not change your life for thrash but if you're in the mood for just some good working class thrash this is it and uh really dug this one and then so scott liked this album so much that he started talking to the band and uh when they decided to re-record their debut album he ended up putting it out for them so then you've got uh completely reanimated avenger of bloods debut and this is on No Life Till Metal Records. I think, if I remember correctly, it was originally called Complete Annihilation. And now you've got Completely Re-Annihilated. But uh, I actually like this one, their debut, better than their third album, to be perfectly honest. But uh, I like them both. Um, definitely worth checking out, though, uh, for all you thrash guys and gals out there. Next up, do I have two of this band? I sure do. I got some doubles going on. Um, so it's completely coincidental because this first one I've had for probably two years just sitting here. Uh, but this has set the world on fire from Annihilator. Um, by this time, most people had jumped off the Annihilator bandwagon. I can't remember if this is their third or their fourth album. Uh, I've always liked this album. It's not as, as, as heavy or it's not... This is kind of a mix of thrash and 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 straight up metal, as opposed to their first couple albums that were more straight up thrash. Um, I've always loved. I mean, I like all the Jeff Waters albums. I mean, the guy is fantastic. But uh, um, I've always loved this one, and I was really happy when I heard that um, Music on Vinyl was going to be repressing it. Uh, so as soon as I saw this one going on sale, I had to get it. And then, like I always do, it ended up in my stack forever until I got to it. I was so excited to get it that it just sat there. But, uh, I mean, it's an album I had listened to hundreds of times before. Um, and then, uh, this one was just last year, I believe? 2021, uh, when this was done. But this is a, an interesting one. So this is Annihilator Metal 2. So I've got the first metal, and I thought that this was just going to be a re-recording of the first metal, and it's not. Um, and I believe we have Dave Lombardo. Okay, yeah. So we've got Stu Block on vocals, uh, and we've got Dave Dave Lombardo on drums. And then, okay, that, that's what it was. So Jeff Waters, rhythm and lead. Uh, rhythm and lead guitars, bass, keyboards, and backing vocals from the original 2007 tracks with Stu Block on lead vocals and Dave Lombardo on drums. But then they've got backing vocals from Danko Jones, uh, Dan Beeler from Exciter, Alan Johnson from Exciter. Uh, I mean, there's like backing vocals from like seven different dudes. I mean, it, it's pretty insane. It's a great album though. If you run across this, I think I paid 25 bucks for it. Um, it's worth that. Um, I've always liked Annihilator. I've got almost their whole discography on CD. Um, and it's good to see some of this stuff getting pressed to vinyl. Um, again, this was a new one I wasn't uh, expecting. I When I bought this, I thought it was going to be the original album. I didn't know it was going to be a re-recording or a reimagining, whatever you want to call it. Next up, this is one I was really excited when I saw, and I pre-ordered it right away. Um, this label is getting a little bit overblown, especially the prices that they're charging for their records is ridiculous. Um, However, I was really happy to buy this one. The prices of the originals have gone in the $100 range. Uh, I still have my original cassette of this, but this is uh, Blow My Fuse from Kicks. 
Uh, always been a huge fan of Kicks. I've talked about them numerous times over the years, but uh, just a fantastic band. And this is just a, this is this might be. I think this is the last album of theirs that I really liked. Um, so really happy to have that one on vinyl now. Uh, next up, total bootleg. Don't care. I need to find another or word. I still don't understand why these haven't been pressed to vinyl. But this is uh, um, Countdown to Extinction. I did have the MoFi pressing of this. Um, I never really liked the way it sounded. And my copy was VG+. I, if I ever run across a nicer copy, I'll buy it. But uh, it wasn't in the best condition. And, and I ended up selling it to a buddy who re didn't care, really wanted to have it in his collection. And then uh, Billy Hurst got a hold of a couple of these uh, from Europe. We've got the unofficial count. And this one sounds really good. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a copy. Of, it's a CD copy, uh, which is fine for me for now. It does sound really good, and I've been playing it quite a bit. I've also got Euthanasia that was done by the same group who did that one. Um, the artwork looks like crap. You can, it was just a, a crappy blow up, which makes no sense because the record's out there. They could have just done a high res scan of the actual record, but uh, it is what it is. And then another Megadeth. I finally listened. To, so another one that I pre ordered. Uh, this is the most recent Megadeth, The Sick to Dying in the Dead. Uh, it's a fantastic record. I really love it. Uh, it's just funny that, I mean, it's sad here. I saw the band live twice on the Sick, the Dying, and the Dead tour before I actually listened to the album, uh, which is funny. And I've been listening to it quite a bit ever since. Um, I pre-ordered the copy with the lenticular cover and it came with a single. Uh, they're still available out there. Uh, I believe these were pre-ordered only through the band. Um, and they're sold out there, but you can do discogs and stuff for, for uh, the price hasn't shot through the roof. Uh, fantastic album. If you haven't checked out the most recent uh, Megadeth, you, you really should. Uh, next up, we have Evil. Uh, Hell, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Hell Unleashed. Uh, I'm not sure if this is their most recent album. They may have a newer one since this came out as well. Um, I ordered this through Newberry Comics. Uh, it came with a, a signed um, CD booklet. Just a really killer British thrash. Um, I don't think these guys are quite as good as Zentrix, but they're right up there uh, with the other British thrash bands. Um, these guys, these, these guys and Zentrix are probably the two best of the of the British thrash bands, in my opinion. Um, fantastic album, though. Uh, I, and this is the only Evil I have on vinyl. I think I have one other album of theirs on CD that I really dug too. Um, so if I run across any more of their stuff, I'll definitely grab it. And then last but not least. Um, I finished my last video with an EP. Why not finish this one with an EP too? That, it wasn't planned. It's just the way the records fell. Um, but I think I uh, maybe two or three videos ago, I showed uh, the Intruder albums that were getting repressed. And they didn't just do the Intruder albums. They also did the EP as well. So this is Escape from Pain from Intruder. Um, they did a fantastic job on the sound of the music. And the back cover, I mean, the print looks really good, but man, they did a horrible job um, reproducing this cover. I mean, they didn't even try. It's it's super dark. It's 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 super. It's kind of fuzzy. Um, it it just disappoints me when Big Lay. I mean, this is Metal Blade. There's no reason for them not to have done a better. Oh, they did this through Lusitanian music. Um, so it was done by Lusitania Music, but even some of the even some of the Metal Blade stuff I've been getting has been fuzzy too. Um, I don't know why they don't pay a couple bucks to have somebody do the artwork the right way. And the worst part about Metal Blade is some of those records that they're repressing. Again, they've pressed on vinyl back in the day. I don't know why they didn't do a high res scan of one of their old ones instead of uh, putting out a new cloudy one with uh, crappy front artwork. You know. It is what it is. Uh, that's it, guys. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I will talk to you soon. Take care, VC.